You may want to take a moment to pause the video and reread the problem before listening on. In part A, the question notes that when switch S is closed, what is the change in the electric potential V sub 1 across resistor 1? Or does V sub 1 remain the same? So what we shall do is take a closer look at the scenario. Let's zoom in on the circuit right here. This is from part A. Right now, of course, the switch is open. So when this switch is open, then this rightmost section of the circuit is irrelevant. We might even actually just remove it. And what we'll do next is decide what is the potential difference across R1 under this condition. Now, of course, we can do that by simply applying the loop rule. We know that the EMF of the battery was given to us. We go back up and check it out. It was 12 volts. So we're going to label that as 12 volts. Now, most of you might just say, well, doesn't that mean the potential difference across R1 is also 12 volts? And it is, but we could technically apply a loop rule. We could sort of pretend that we don't know the potential difference across resistor 1, and we can find it by using the loop rule. Now, to use the loop rule, you start at any arbitrary point in the circuit. I typically like to begin at the negative terminal of the battery, and then you move your way around the circuit until you return to your starting point. As you move around the circuit, you want to keep track of your potential changes across the resistors and across the terminals of the battery. So, for example, we start at the negative terminal and we move clockwise, and when we do that, we move from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery, and doing so increases the potential. That's actually what the chemicals inside the battery do. They raise the potential to a higher value. So as we go from the negative to positive terminal, we have a potential increase of 12 volts. And then we continue our journey around the circuit. We're going to go through the resistor. When you go through a resistor, there is a potential drop, sort of like a ball rolling down a hill. So we're going to subtract V sub 1. That would be the potential change across the resistor or through the resistor and then we continue clockwise and return to where we started when you return to your starting point you set the total potential change is equal to zero now solving this very simple equation would show us that v sub 1 is equal to 12 volts so that's the initial potential difference across r1 when that switch is open but let's go ahead and close the switch and see what happens to the potential across resistor r1 so we'll close the switch, and that introduces the right section of the circuit. But we can still apply the loop rule. The battery still supplies 12 volts of potential difference across its terminals. If we start at the negative terminal and work our way through this loop here, and yes, you can bypass the right section. All you need to do is go through one loop and return to where you started. The calculation that we just outlined would be exactly the same. You would still have the 12 volt increase across the battery terminals, the potential drop across resistor one. And when you solve that, V sub one is still equal to 12 volts. So of course the difference, if we said V sub one at the final scenario, I guess we can give that a prime in order to denote the difference here and then subtract that by V sub one in the initial picture, we would have 12 minus 12, which equals zero. So there is no change. If we go back to part A's question, it asks us what is the change in electric potential V sub 1 across R1. It doesn't change. So it remains the same would be the answer, or you could say that the change is zero. So part A is solved. There is no change in V sub 1. It remains the same. We can look at the circuit in part B next. So here is that circuit, and it's a little bit different here. We're going to keep the switch open initially, so we can once again just get rid of the rightmost section of the circuit. And then what we have left over are two resistors. They are R1 and R3. And you would want to ask yourself whether these are in parallel or in series. Hopefully you can see they are indeed in series because as the current travels through the circuit, it never encounters a junction. It can only flow in one pathway only. So that would tell us that these resistors are arranged in a series pattern. Now we know that the resistance values are equal. The question said that all resistors have resistances of six ohms. So we're going to apply our loop rule. We're going to keep in mind that because the resistors are identical, they have identical resistance values, the potential drop across each of them will be the same. That's a very important thing to note, that if they have the same 
resistance value and they are in series, they're going to have the same potential drop. So in other words, we could say that V3 is going to equal V1. So we'll keep that in mind as we go through the loop rule. Let's start at the negative terminal and start keeping track of potential changes as we go clockwise through this circuit. So again, going from negative to positive terminals is an increase of electric potential of 12 volts. We pass through R3 next in our clockwise journey, there will be a potential drop. Now you could write that as minus V sub three, that's fine. But as we just noted, V sub three is the same as V sub one. So for now, we're gonna actually substitute in V sub one for V sub three. And then we continue clockwise, we encounter resistor R1. Again, that has a potential drop also equal to V sub one. When we return to our starting point, we always set these potential changes equal to zero. So now we have 12 volts minus two times V sub one. We can add the two V sub one to both sides of the equation. And when we divide both sides by two, we end up getting six volts. So this is the value of V sub one initially. But now we wanna examine what the circuit looks like after we close that switch. So the circuit would look like this. Now, perhaps some of you might note that we could maybe do the same thing. Maybe again, start at the negative terminal, go through a loop in this orientation. And gee, since V3 and V1 have the same value, isn't it gonna be the same story? Isn't V sub one still gonna work out to be what we just determined of six volts? And the answer is no, because in this case, we cannot say that V sub three is equal to V sub one. Why can't we say that? Well, in the previous circuit, which looked like this, we had current going through a series arrangement of resistors. So however much current exited the battery, that current would flow through R3, and that current would also flow through R1, and it would be the same amount of current. Because remember, in series, the current values are going to be the same. That's why it was perfectly reasonable to say that the potential drops are going to be the same. They had the same current, they had the same resistance values, they're gonna have the same potential drop. But in fact, in this case, the current flowing through R3 and the current through R1 will not be the same. And that's because as the current exits the battery, it's going to encounter this junction. And when it encounters that junction, the current splits. Some of the current will flow through the right portion of the circuit and some of it will throw downward flow downward through R1. So the amount of current that's going through resistor three will not be the same as the current flowing through resistor one. They will have different currents and therefore, despite their equal resistance values, they're not gonna have the same potential drop. So we cannot say that V sub three is equal to V sub one. So that's one thing to notice. Now, you might notice that R1 and R2, you can finally start talking about R2, they are in parallel with one another. And because they are in parallel with one another, they will have the same potential drop across their, uh, across the resisted, resistors, excuse me. So because they are in parallel, they will have the same V, basically. So we are going to say that V sub two is indeed equal to V sub one. And because they are in parallel, we can also apply the following relationship. You perhaps have learned in this chapter that for parallel resistors, we can combine the parallel resistors into an equivalent resistor by using this equation here. So we were given the resistance values. They were both six ohms. So we're gonna plug those values in. If we simplify on the right-hand side, we will get one over REQ. That's gonna be two sixths, which reduces to one third. And then if you kind of invert both sides of the equation or perhaps cross multiply, if you prefer that, you can see the equivalent resistance is three ohms. So we're gonna take those two resistors, R1 and R2, and we're going to combine them into a single equivalent resistor. Now we notice that R3 and R equivalent are in series with one another. We also recall that R3 had a resistance of six ohms. Now with series resistors, you can get the equivalent resistance, which we'll just put a prime value on, by adding the resistances. So we would add R sub three and R EQ. So if we add six ohms to three ohms, we get nine ohms. So the total resistance in this circuit 
is 9 ohms. So we could actually redraw it one more time with the battery and then this overall equivalent resistor whose resistance is 9 ohms. Now the battery still has an EMF of 12 volts. We can actually now calculate the current that is flowing through this circuit. So conventionally the current will exit the positive terminal and flow around, in this case, in a clockwise direction. We can calculate that current through Ohm's law. Ohm's law basically tells us that potential difference equals current times resistance. We can solve that for current by dividing both sides by the resistance. Now we have these values. We know the battery provides a potential difference of 12 volts. We know the equivalent resistance is 9 ohms. So let's go ahead and calculate that. And we get a value of 1.33 amps. So that's the total amount of current that's coming out of the battery. Now let's go back to the circuit, which is right here. So we now know that 1.33 amps of current is coming out of the battery. But we noted that when the current reaches this point right here, this is called a junction, it's going to split. Now, how does it split? Well, in this question, the resistances R1 and R2 are equal. Let's remember that they were both 6 ohms. So because they're equal, the current will split itself in half. Normally, if one resistance was smaller, then more current would go in that direction. But in this case, the resistances are equal. So the current just splits itself in half. So half of 1.33 is 0.67. So you're going to get 0.67 amps of current flowing through the right section of the circuit. You're also going to get 0.67 amps of current flowing through R1. Now that's interesting. Let's talk about that, that there's 0.67 amps flowing through R1. Because Ohm's law tells us that in order for us to calculate the potential drop across resistor 1, we take the current flowing through resistor 1 and multiply it by the resistance value of resistor 1. We just figured out the current, it was 0.67 amps, and R1, just like all the other resistors, has a resistance of 6 ohms. So when we work this out, we can see that the potential drop across resistor 1 is 4 volts. So now go back to the initial picture. Recall in the initial picture, when we had the switch open, the potential drop across R1 was 6 volts, now, when we close the switch and did this analysis, we can see the potential drop is 4 volts. So, the difference, if we take V1 prime, which would be after the switch was closed, and subtract V1 initial, then we would be doing 4 volts minus 6 volts. That's a change of negative 2 volts. So, the potential difference across R1 changed. It decreased by 2 volts. 